Hello students! Uh, today we're going to talk about the last type of uh, type 2 uh, uh, naming, uh, the last type of ionic compounds, and these are compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Remember, poly means many, so polyatomic means many atoms bonded together to form a charged entity. Something with charges. Um, here's some common polyatomic ions. Uh, we've got NH4, which has a positive charge. This right here is going to indicate the top number is the number of charges and what the charge is. Uh, notice ammonium right here. Ammonium. Uh, ammonium is the only cation, and remember cations are cations because they have positive charges positive charges. All right, uh, we also have nitrite, we also have uh, nitrate, uh, sulfite, SO3 2 minus, sulfate, SO4 2 minus, uh, hydrogen sulfate, often called bisulfate, um, is HSO4 minus, we have OH minus, hydroxide, cyanide, I know you've heard of, is CN minus, uh, phosphate is PO4-3 minus, hydrogen phosphate um, is uh, hydrogen phosphate, HPO4-2 minus, dihydrogen phosphate, H2PO4 minus, uh, carbonate, CO3-2 minus, hydrogen carbonate, often called bicarbonate, is HCO3 minus, uh, hypochlorite is ClO minus, chlorite is ClO2 minus, chlorate ClO3 minus, perchlorate ClO4 minus, and I want to point this out again, all of these have a minus charge. The only difference is the number of oxygens, and that makes us go from hypo chlorite to chlorite to chlorate to perchlorate as we go down. Acetate is C2H3O2 minus, permanganate is MnO4 minus, dichromate is Cr2O72 minus, while just chromate is CrO4 2 minus. Same charge again, but chromate has only one uh, chromium, while dichromate has two chromiums. And then peroxide is O2 2 minus. Uh, I'm not going to make you memorize these, but make sure you know where these are on your ion charges periodic table. Um, you, need, you need to be familiar with, with, when I say carbonate, you're not looking for C2H3O2. And if I say nitrate, uh, you're not looking for uh, CN. You have, need to have an idea of what is what uh, so that you can name and also come up with formulas for these. Uh, always remember the polyatomic name is second in most of them. Uh, many polyatomic ions are oxanions because they contain oxygen atoms. That makes sense, right? Oxyanions uh, contain oxygen. Yeah, makes a whole lot of sense. So let's talk about writing formulas for polyatomics. Uh, you just treat the polyatomic ion as a single thing, a single entity, and then you balance the charges just like binary rules, just like if it was a chloride or a fluoride. It's just now a polyatomic ion. You put parentheses around the poly when there is more than one. So if you have two hydroxides, you need to make sure you have parentheses around the whole polyatomic ion, not just one thing. And naming ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions is very similar to naming binary ionic compounds. Uh, the cation cat name is first, or it could be uh, NH4+. Again, that is a cation, but usually it's going to be a calcium uh, or a magnesium or a manganese. Uh, but you're going to use a Roman numeral in the case of manganese because remember, manganese is multivalent. It has multiple charges. Uh, and just remember, recognize the names and charges of the polyatomics. You want to get familiar with that. You want to think acetate. You want to think hydroxide. You want to think carbonate. And know that I'm not just talking about a carbon 
uh, ion or a uh, chlorine ion when I'm talking about chlorate. So let's go through some examples. Uh, I'm going to go through and put them all here and then we'll go through one by one and we'll name some and I'll leave some there for you to practice naming. Uh, and uh, so let's start. Uh, we've got Na, we've got SO4. Well, we know Na is sodium because we memorized this. And then we also know SO4 is sulfate. And sodium is monovalent. It's only got one type. So our answer is sodium sulfate. Let's do this one. Uh, K3PO4. Well, K we know is potassium. PO4 we know is phosphate. So we're talking potassium phosphate. Uh, however, the next one's a little trickier um, because we know Fe is iron, and iron is a very common multivalent uh, cation. Remember, it has a 2 plus or a 3 plus. Well, we know nitrate has a NO3, has a 1 minus charge. This whole thing in the parentheses has a 1 minus charge. And we have three of them, so 3 times 1 minus is 3 minus. Fe is going to be needs to balance that out so we know it's a 3 plus. So we now have iron 3 nitrate. How about MnOH2? The OH in parentheses. We know MN is manganese. We know OH is hydroxide. We know OH is a minus charge, minus one charge. We have two of them. Uh, we know manganese is a uh, transition metal. We know it has more than one charge. So we have manganese to hydroxide. Uh, now five, I'm going to allow you to do by yourself because I think you can do it. Uh, six, I'm also going to allow you to do by yourself because I think you can do that one as well. You know what? Seven, I'm going to allow you to do by yourself too. Let's do eight together though. A little trickier. K, because now we're getting into lots of things here. There's no parentheses, so it's a little tougher to uh, get everything out. But we know the K comes first, so this must mean it is our cation. Um, it's potassium. But MN, hmm, that's, that's a... Hmm. Well, I look on my sheet and I see MnO4 is permanganate, so KMnO4 is potassium permanganate. Uh, why don't I need the parentheses here? Oh yeah! It's because potassium is only going to form one more one type of ion. It is a monovalent ion. It's not multivalent, so I don't need any more than that. Uh oh, what about this guy? Wow, that looks crazy. Well, it's not tough at all. Uh, it really is. If you know NH4, just know this is ammonium. And you look again, polyatomic ion, you see Cr207. Mm, oh, that's dichromate. So we're talking ammonium dichromate. That's it. That's it. Uh, how about CoClO3? Okay, well, we've got a parentheses. We know this is all one ion. Uh, ClO3, that's chlorate. Uh, and we know this is cobalt, um, but cobalt is a uh, monovalent ion. Hmm, what could the answer be? I'll let you figure that one out. Uh, how about this one right here? Uh, KClO2. Uh, it's going to be similar to this before, but we know this is potassium. This is chlorite. Uh, what is it? Potassium chloride. And finally, uh, we have NO2. Uh, we know this is a 1 minus charge. Uh, we know we have two of them. We have Cu. Uh, we've got to balance out the two 1 minuses. Uh, that means that is, yeah, copper 2 nitrite. So uh, practice these. If you have any questions about these, make sure you write this down and you bring this in so we can practice this. Uh, because we're going to move on to covalence and acids, guys. So uh, make sure you're getting this down, you're practicing these. That's the best way to get good at these, is just practice. All right, let's go formulas. Um, we'll do, we have fewer. 
Um, and I'm not going to go through all of them again. But I'll go through the first one. Uh, sodium we know is Na. Carbonate we know is CO3. Uh, that's going to be Na2CO3. Where do we get this from? Oh yeah, carbonate has a 2 minus charge. We know sodium is group 1 and only has a 1 plus charge. So we need two of these and one of those we have Na2CO3. Where did this come from? Oh yeah, and nitrate has a 1 minus charge. And there are three of them. So we have this. So we go the opposite way. We have Fe, three plus from this. We have nitrate, which is NO3, but it's one minus. And we do our LCM, and we'd come up with three times one, three, three times two, six, three times three, nine. And nitrite is one times one, one, two times one, two, 3 times 1, 3. We know 3 is our least common multiple, and to get to that 3, uh, we need 1 iron, 3, and we need 3 nitrates. That's it. It's just LCM. Uh, what about this one? Copper 2, we know Cu2+, and sulfate. Well, I'll let you figure that guy out. How about this next one? Sodium and chlorite. See if you can figure that guy out. Okay, this is going to be a 1 plus chlorite. That's going to be... Hmm. So it's real easy here. Yeah, because this is a 1 plus and this is a 1 minus. We have NaClO2. They balance each other out. That's exactly right. This one's a little more tough because we know zinc it only has a 2 plus charge. And we know phosphate has a 3 minus charge. So we have to do our LCM. We go uh, 2, 4, 6, multiplying by 1, 2, and 3. Phosphate is 3, 6, 9, multiplying by 1, 2, and 3. We see 6 is the least common multiple. Uh, if this is a 2 plus charge, we need 3 zincs to get there. If this phosphate is a 2 or a 3 minus charge, we need two phosphates. So that means our answer is Zn3, because we need three zincs, and PO4, 2, because we need two phosphates. What about this one? Barium, Ba, sulfate. I'll let you figure that one out. Let's do uh, lead to hydroxide. We are now OH is a one minus charge. Lead two has a uh, two plus charge. So it means we need two of these to balance out the one of these. We could LCM and go two, four, six, and we could do LCM one, two, uh, three. We see that two is the LCM. And so we need uh, one PB and two OHs because the one minus charge. And this one I'm just gonna let you do. Yeah, see if you can figure that guy out. So again, if you have any questions on these, I kind of went through it fast because my last video was crazy long. Um, if I'd love to discuss these in class. We're gonna practice a little bit more. Uh, bring these questions into me so we can get good at this before we move on to the next two things, all right? Uh, you have a really crazy, fantastic day, and I really hope this was helpful.